I'm really ecstatic to be showing off this deck and this archetype specifically is something that I've never played with in uh, the course of my magic journey. And it's a deck that was played by Yellowhead during the metagame challenge to decent success, I believe. And I actually do not know the original creator of the list, but if I do find that out, I will put that in the description. But let's talk about the list itself. So this is the first defender deck that I'm playing. And defender is a keyword that means that the creature cannot attack, it can only block. So usually that's a pretty big downside. And that's why these cards are usually not played unless it's in a tribal deck that can use the defender keyword to you gain additional effects. And in this case, We've got three one-drop defender creatures, and we've got Wing Mantle Chaplain, which comes into play and makes a 1-1 bird for each creature with defender that you control. And that is really good. That means that, uh, I mean, at first I actually misunderstood the card. I didn't actually read it. I thought it just made 1-1-1 one, one, one when it came in, and then it made 1-1s one, when you play defender cards after that, because the second clause of this card is whenever another creature with defender enters the battlefield under your control, you make a 1-1. One, one. But that's not the case. So it enters the battlefield, makes a 1-1 one, one for each creature you control with Defender already. And then it has that static for creatures you control, uh, cre when you cast a creature with Defender and it enters the battlefield. So while it's already on the battlefield. I'm get getting off track here, but essentially <laughs> the card is really good. That's all I want to say about it. So we've got three 1-drops to go with the Wing Mantle Chaplain. And that's all the Defender cards that we're playing. After that, we are playing Knight Errant of Eos, one of the new cards that has Convoke. So essentially, we're trying to leverage Convoke since our creatures can't attack to gain value and to use those creatures as mana dorks and blockers. Knight Errant of Eos, Convoke enters the battlefield. Look at top six. You may reveal two creature cards, up to two creature cards, with mana value X or less from among them, where X is the amount, uh, the number of creatures that Convokes Knight Errant of Eos. And you put those cards into your hand. That's really good. Very, very, very insane, actually. So, depending on the amount of creatures that convoked it, that's the CMC of the cards that you can grab. So, if you tap four creatures to convoke it, it'll cost one mana, so one white. And you'll be able to look at top six and grab two four drops at most. You can grab three drops, two drops, one drops, whatever you want, but four drop at most. And that's really good. You can also convoke it for five, and then you can grab another knight off of it, which is also insane. But yeah, for a 4-4 creature, that costs pretty much nothing when you have a bunch of defender creatures and a bunch of just creatures in general on the battlefield that don't need to attack, this card is just absolutely insane. It is just absurd in this deck. Another Convoke card that we're trying to leverage is Convoke... Um, wait, what? It <laughs> is Meeting of the Minds, which is just an instant speed draw too, and that is really good actually, <laughs> because again, we have a lot of defender creatures, we have a lot of creatures in general, and that means that this usually costs like at most two mana and at least zero mana it can cost you just tap four creatures and then bam you get to draw two and that's really insane at instant speed the key thing with this deck is that we're looking to most of the time pass turn and leave mana up to hold up counter magic because that's like a key thing where you're ahead on board because you have a bunch of like well statted defender creatures you're not really attacking but you want to stop your opponent from developing their threats and whatever haymakers they have. So we've got Protect the Negotiators uh, at instant speed, of course, which has a kicker of white. So two and a white. And if the spell was kicked, you make a 1-1. One, one, and then counter target spell, unless it's controller, play, pays one for each creature you control. That's really insane. In this deck, this is like a hard counter. Early game, not really. But it, when you reach into the mid game, this is two mana counter any spell, basically. And then for three mana, you get a 1-1. One, one, so that's really good. One one's useful for convoke. Really good card. Really good card in this deck. Ledger Shredder is just used to cycle through cards fast, and Flyer is really good in this deck. And we have the ground kind of locked with Defender, so we want to attack in the air, and that's exactly what Ledger Shredder does. And it has impressed in this deck, and has been very good. Lumen Lunark Veteran is pretty much the main way that this deck just completely annihilates aggro. It is a one drop that has decent stats for, I mean, it's a 1-1. One, 1-mana one. One 1-1, one, one, it's a classic. And then when another creature enters the battlefield under your control, you gain 1 life. That's really good. And when it dies, you can cast it from the graveyard for its disturbed cost, and you get a flyer. A 1-1 one, one flyer, and whenever a creature you control leaves the battlefield, gain 1 life. So, life gain, cheap, able to convoke cards, very insane. 
and pretty much I, I forgot to talk about this convoke card which is artistic refusal a six mana instant that you get to choose one or both counter target spell and or draw two cards then discard a card so really good effect very expensive but if you manage to pull this off with convoke it can cost like three two three three i would say between four and two mana usually and that's a really good card if you think about it four mana counter spell draw two discard that's really good now of course this is not useful in the early game so this is more of like a late game kind of big spell that you want to cast it's pretty cheap in the late game but you can't really cast it early most of the time the card is just very good it's very useful you don't want too many because of course it's expensive so yeah it's just a good card but i want to talk about overcharged amalgam probably the card i feel like is most important overall in this deck but after the night okay it's hard to explain like this card is like your most important thing to get in the mid game so early game you want you want to like set up your board you want to play a knight and you want to catch you want to fetch an amalgam off the knight so you want four cmc minimum and you want to get an amalgam and that kind of locks your opponent into a situation where you're going to if they cast a spell you want to counter you're going to get a three three and you're going to counter their spell at the cost of like a defender or a token or something like that so yeah this is a four mana three three flash flyer exploit and when it exploits something so you sacrifice something another creature it counters a spell activate ability or triggered ability so really really strong card and it's pretty much destroys everything it's just it's just a bomb in the, in the mid game like once you're set up this card just kind of finishes finishes things off for you i think it's just super important it's just fantastic that you're able to find interaction off of night which is like such high upside to be able to you know look at top six and potentially get a counter spell and a three three like that's just super good so yeah there's amalgam the mana base is good i don't think i need to talk too much about it Mirax is fantastic in this deck with convoke it's basically four mana generate another mana that's really good uh that's really really good and last but not least we've got El elshnorn a you know the five mana four seven classic vigilance and it uh, stops your opponent from getting any triggered abilities off of permanence entering the battlefield and that's really good and you get double double enter the battlefield effects so double knight double chaplain double double lunark veteran procs double amalgam not really relevant but that's really about it and that's all you need really and it most importantly stops your opponent from doing stuff sideboard's got some new cool cards we got surge of salvation a one mana all permanence you control and yourself again hex proof until end of turn and prevent all damage that black or red sources would deal to creatures you control so it's really good against sweepers brotherhood's end very good card destroy evil classic invasion of gob this card is really insane um it's really good as like a tempo play since you you know you played for two and you delay an opponent sweeper or something by two mana so just a really good card and then lead shield array is also sweeper protection and also allows your one one flyers to grow bigger so at the end of the at the beginning of your end step you get plus one plus one counters on creatures that attack so very good at snowballing two ossifications three fairy masterminds these are really good it's good to have, since again, we have the board locked down on the ground, it's good to have a flyer to kind of uh, start swinging a little bit in the air while you just tempo out your, or while you stall out your opponent's board with the defender creatures. So this card's really good. The activated ability is fantastic as well. And it's a flash flyer. It's just a good card. Two Lorans, it's a classic. Destroy enchantment. An artifact, really good. Four mana Elish Norn is for the mirror match pretty much i think i don't know i have not played it yet in theory it's good but i guess we'll have to find out another amalgam for control matchups another elish norn for the mirror and whatever etb matchup and another artistic refusal because uh you need counter magic so then this card is good counter magic in matchups that are slower so there you have it anyways this deck has been a blast and it has been really good so yeah These one landers are just plaguing my Mulgans. Okay, that feels good. I 
I'm not reading your fucking essay copy pasta. Fuck off. Oh god. Someone help. I'm getting rod priest. I'm getting rod priested. Pinkertons it is then? <laughs> okay, I'm gonna read it. Just don't send the Pinkertons, please. Jeez. Why am I playing against target Rod Priest Poison instead of just creature based Rod Priest Poison? Or maybe this is also played in the. I don't know. Alright. Well. I ain't feeling too good about this game. I have to attack. Like, there's just no way around it. I'm gonna lose this uh, way too fast if I don't. That's fine. I would like to not be faced with another audacity though. I just it's so disappointing that I'm facing a like target version of a of Roth Beast instead of a pure creature. At least I get a double larder activation into maybe something. I kind of like that actually. Ah, it's interesting. I, I don't think I no. I think I go for like knight or something more high rolly than that. A land will come eventually. Triple. No, again, same situation. I think I go for something a little bit more high roll. That's good. I'm surprised that actually connected. Wait, I might be in a decent position actually. Kind of interesting. Although I can't deal with that too well though. Mm. <clears throat> yeah, that's connecting, isn't it? Hmm. I could just sacrifice a larder to not allow it to connect, which I probably will do. And then it, okay, here's what's interesting is that if they end up attacking with this, it won't be on blocks, which also means that I get a bulwark attack, essentially. Uh, the, the might getting buffed by seed core is pretty annoying as well, though. Actually, they might. Never mind. Maybe this has to connect. Actually. Yeah, blue. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't really think about that too much, but at least I get this. I guess it's connecting, huh? Yeah, didn't really think about that too much. I could also not let it connect by sacrificing my chaplain, which I think is maybe okay. I mean, it is three toxic, and I don't think I value these that much. Let me think about this. Um, they go up to 15, and I will have... This doesn't count, so six plus five, that's not enough. So maybe, 
Maybe I don't let it connect. I'm a little bit scared about the seven poison. So I can do one larder, one mines, right? Okay, there's another bulwark. No, bulwark is not winning the game. They're at 15. I have 6 plus 5, 11. It's not enough. This has trample. Why would I block with a bird? Hey, what are you guys talking about? I can let it connect, and then... I only have six plus four, but four blocks here, and then I have 11. That's not even close. I don't know. Next turn, though. It's fine. I was calculating a two turn lethal, not this turn. I forced the block anyways, so that's actually good. You take one, they go back up. So it's so annoying. Lifelink is just so annoying. It's such a hard thing for me to race. Well, I can at least catch one of these, whatever they want to give. Oh no, they have two. Ah. So annoying. Guys, <laughs> they're so annoying. I can't race the lifelink. And they go to 20. I have 9 plus 9, 18 is not even enough. I should have flashed in the amalgam. That's my best bet. I need a knight. I need a knight. Like, I really need a knight. This is just destroying me. It's such, it's such a hard matchup, I think. It is actually super hard. Once they connect with three poison, it just becomes unbearable. I could have... Oh, wait, did I miss lethal? I just realized. There was a play I didn't think about. I never thought about using the... I should have done that. I did not even think about that. I think that would have actually been lethal too. So I exploit on no target. I just I just target I, I do chump block. I target this. They activate here, they activate here. I counter the activate ability, they don't gain life. I get a 3-3, three, three, they don't gain life here. Then I activate twice. And I have a 3-3, three, three. so I actually, I did have lethal, I think. I just didn't. I just didn't see it. My mistake, really. Ooh, this might win, though. Uh, maybe not. Uh, 
I never thought about holding the birds back. Why did why did I not do that? Like now they don't have protection. So I hold this back because it just blocks the the goobers. So even I should attack with the amalgam, right? Maybe I don't. So I send this here. Triple. No, double on this. I should send. I don't know. It isn't even worth it. They gain so much life. It's not even worth. At this point, I'm not winning by. I need a knight. I need a knight. I don't know how I'm winning this. So the this is so impossible to beat. I think. As, well, this leaves. Okay, if this bloated contaminator leaves the battlefield, I think I might I might have it. Okay, okay larger zombie, it's time. You have to shine, my boy. It's time. Full dig for night. But I did through. I did throw the game. I I did have a lethal line that I just I was playing way too fast. Didn't use brain, but at least I mentioned it so people were able to see what I was talking about. Theoretically. Alright. Knight into Elish Norn, into Knight again, into Amalgam. Into Chaplain, 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 they call. Well, okay. If I can do this. Well, all right then, boy. Give me those birds. <laughs> okay, I mean, they... I feel like they threw by attacking with the Skrelv and allowing me to trade it. Thankfully, I saw that I saw the trade at least, even though that was not the best play that there was. It was still a better play than not blocking the Skrelv. But holy moly, that is not a matchup that I enjoy playing. <laughs> But double chaplain does it, yeah. Double chaplain. I'm happy that Luminarch Veteran seems to be a card that you can cut pretty easily. About trenches? I think trenches is fine, yeah. I was thinking about an anthem effect, but again, all of them feel a little bit weird because you always want creatures to develop because of Convoke, so the best anthem would probably be be a wedding announcement. I would uh, I would say wedding announcement is um, maybe where you want to be at. I don't know, cutting Luminarch Veteran is definitely, it, it does hurt my early game a little bit, so I have less Convoke. And that might be bad, like I do think Elish Norn is, it's fine, but it's also really expensive. I feel like the early game is really important against Poison. It either gets out of hand or you're, you stabilize relatively quickly. So I'm going to go with this. Yeah, wedding announcement does feel like it could be really good, but it's also pretty slow. But I don't know, like this deck is slow, so at the same time... That's the first thing that popped out to me when I looked at the deck, I was like... 
I was surprised to not see waiting announcement, but I'm assuming there's a reason for that, but I can't really think of it myself at the moment. That's why I wanted to test the deck first. But it does feel like, at least in the sideboard, maybe, there are definitely matchups where you would want it, like against black decks, black red decks. These one landers have been destroying me, though, in terms of mulliganing. The number of one, it's like one lander every match, basically. I mean, it is 23 lands, but still, I don't feel like it's that common. It shouldn't be that common. I think. At least I'd hope not. You get a one lander. I'm really scared of um of the 4-4. Which is why I'm gonna pass here. That is so weak. I'm just gonna let that resolve. That's so weak. All right, the second one, <sighs> whatever. I have Amalgam now, I can counter the 4-4. Four -four. I'm a little sad I had to use these, but no. I don't even know what that does, but <laughs> I know I have to counter it. <laughs> ah. A little bit disappointing. I need a knight. So I'm going to use this as a... Does this perform well against aggro with all defenders? I think so, yeah. I think this would be a really good deck against Mono Red. Or one of the better decks, at least. I wonder if I'd let them take my Ledger Shredder at this point. They really want it. It's just so weak if they... Yeah, it's, that's so weak. <laughs> it's just the one for one with their combat trick. Although I do lose my access to surveil or temporarily. That was the best of three. Oh, baby. That's what I'm talking about. I haven't really been active, active since the new set. How's the best of three standard right now? I mean, if this deck is a thing, it's probably, it's probably in a good spot. That's all I have to say about it. Again, I don't, I don't know. I don't. I don't feel comfortable attacking here because I do I do have to block this and I don't want to block with any of these. I would want to block with this. So I think they have another one. If they're using this so liberally, it means they, they probably have another one that makes me uncomfortable. Yep. I'm very happy to be trading combat tricks here. They're not going to be a problem with the trampler later. It seems like a really good situation. And with the surveil, I'm pulling ahead. Okay. I mean, this deck has really fantastic top decks from specific, like kind of stable positions. Like the knight is fantastic, the chaplain's fantastic, any counter magic is fantastic. The draw spell is fantastic. All right. Now we're talking.
All right, time, it's time to swing a little bit. The larder is so busted. It's the best card in the deck. I'm not even joking. I think it actually is. One a one drop that fixes like literally the whole deck. I think without larder zombie, this deck would would be way weaker. But it'd still be good. But you know what I'm saying. So drawing a defender here is actually good, and especially this one feels like uh. Feels like a good one. I won't be activating it now, but I also get a Marex. This, this is pretty good. That's pretty good. I think it's good, especially considering Marex, which I was not even considering. I was going to take this even without that knowledge. So swinging for six and then eight is not lethal, I think. But I think I'm still. Wait. Six, 14 yeah i i don't know there's no reason not to take the six i'm just gonna be chump blocking worst case oh they also deal one to themselves twice so plus two so i'm one off okay this mirror is a nightmare oh it is oh it is if this deck becomes popular it's gonna be bad. It's gonna be a bad situation. It's not time to impeach this deck just yet. I'm telling you, every match. I'm telling you. Like, it's actually every match. At least one time per match. Other oh, ends backbreaking? That's why I have Surge in the sideboard. But it is backbreaking. Yeah. Oh, mono red. Okay. Okay. Oh, no. Come on, I'll turn one on the play. Actually, it's a, it is a problem. Funny. I literally just cut both of the red hate cards in my sideboard. <laughs> Funny how that works, huh? My Both my knockout blows are now in my collection instead of the sideboard, and then I hit this. Hmm. Wonder how that works. Wonder why that happened. So, I have to play both of these, even though I want to play Ledger Shredder. Just because if they do manage to kill one of them, I want to have access to Knight either way. Veterans naturally counter Mono Red. I don't agree. I don't agree. I don't think Veteran by itself, it's not enough. Mono Red has absurd amount of, of tempo advantage for on the play with the creature curve out, but if they don't hit the creature curve out, then I agree with you. I do value the Bulwark less than, than this thing. Uh, whoa! Okay, we win. <laughs> okay. Yeah, they're going to be doing that stuff. I think we're okay. Yeah, the impulse build of Mono Red is not that good, I think. Ooh, that's interesting. Stats or no, I can't. I can't I cannot discard this over land. Like that's just not That's illegal. Right? Has to be. Oh my god, it was not illegal. <laughs> I think that was actually almost, it could have been correct. Like if I hit four drops, I would definitely say that that was a misplay, but. Hmm. Are they just gonna convoke, destroy my knight? 
Wait, but I can convoke and then find my land, actually. Yeah, it's kind of okay. Wait, why do I... Oh, they cast two spells. Let's go! <laughs> Ledger Shredder! Chapelano. Chippity chap. Mono red. Actually, this is the first time that I can block Felden without giving them a card. That's that's actually beautiful. Bulwark. No attack. Actually an upside. <laughs> Stone Brain Remove Chaplain? It's not even that good. Zero mana draw two cards, by the way. Oh. Uh oh. <laughs> Whoopsie. That's okay, we've got a captive weird. No! No spell. Okay, whatever. No spell's bad because I can't even activate the the ledger. Ready, boy. Hmm. I've seen people say that Surge of Salvation is actually not that good against Mono Red, and I can kind of see it. Maybe. I mean, it is good, but it's not, like, insane. It might be insane if they play it terribly, but I feel like it's not that hard to play around. Just pace your removal spells a little bit better. It's really bad if you're trading, though, but I don't know. I think Loran can be good. Like, it's, it's definitely something... I think a 3-5... Yeah, I'll take a 3-5, actually, yeah. Definitely take a 3-5. Protect. Protect is interesting, because I do think it's good. But I don't think it's that good. Also, Ledger Shredder over Fairy Mastermind is interesting. Fairy Mastermind mostly trading. But Shredder, not really. But also, it forces them to use even more removal. I think it's fine. 3-3 three, three Flash is actually a consideration over Protect. But it's also a 4-mana spell. I don't I don't know. I think I'd rather have to... Protecto. Maybe. Or do I want Loran instead of both of those? I think Protect could be Clutch. Uh, oh, top three? Top three best of three decks? Esper Legends. Some Grixis deck. I don't know which one. They're all good. So, yeah, some Grixis deck. And maybe another Grixis deck in third? I don't know. Like, I don't really know what else the third slot would be other than another variant of Grixis. I'm not sure. That's what I can say for now. It's too early to really say. Oh, Grixis, Esper Legends, Random Reanimator. Oh, that's, that was your answer. Yeah, I was thinking about saying Reanimator, but Reanimator is a Grixis deck. <laughs> but I was going to say it, but it... I mean, yeah, okay, maybe Grixis Reanimator. Oh my god, Felden. No, where are my O3s? Uh... 
I'm molding. I'm actually molding. Oh my god, mana base scuffed. So scuffed, man. I have so many blue sources too. I have so many blue sources. Let me count them again. 8, 12, 16. These pain lines are so scary against Mono Red. Elden, why are you so scary? <laughs> why are you so scary, my boy? Oh, nice. Getting the trade here is okay, I think. Especially if it gets these. That's, I'm okay with that. Yeah. Basically traded two for... Well, one for one, one for one. But a little bit more mana. Oh, yes. Oh, I love to see that. Oh, I love to see that. They're, they're just gonna stroke. Stroke the flame. Oh, salvation. Wait, what? Oh, they went face. I was like, wait, how did this not die? <laughs> they went face. Okay. I see, I see. I see you. All right, now, how did they get past my walls, huh? All right, Mono Red, can you get past my wall army? Ow. I think I'm using this over protect. We basically countered a three mana spell, not bad. Oh. <gasps> The knight is here. Do I need to counter here? I don't think I do, but... I don't need to counter. I should just develop. Maybe I just don't need to... Ah, no, I should keep the counter. I'm too greedy. Like, I, I shouldn't, I shouldn't ditch the counter, it's so bad. Brother Zen? <laughs> Trump would be proud of the stack, yeah. I know, that's why, why I named it after him. Attack! Hard counter. See what I mean? Like, this card is so important. That's why I was surprised to see only one protect the negotiators when it's literally a hard counter in the late game. I mean... Like, what else am I... I'm trying to think. What else could I possibly counter? I think this is just the best that's going to... I think countering... Oh, also I get the easy. Okay, never mind. That, that convinces me. I... Okay. Um... 
<laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah, I just forgot about that. But if I if I knew I was getting the Ledger Shredder, that was a no-brainer. I was just thinking about, like, is 4 damage the best I'm getting with that counter? And I think it is. Although this could have been technically more. It's also more mana, though. And now if something leaves the battlefield, which is probably not happening at this point. Ooh! More stats, huh? Ooh! Okay, wait, that's actually bad, though? Because, okay, wait, I actually do want to cast these, but... I mean, I'll take the stat. Free. Wow. <laughs> that worked out. So I actually didn't need the knockout blow, which is something... It was a card that I didn't think I would need, but when I started playing this one, I was like, okay, maybe I do need it. But the fact that I ended up winning doesn't mean much. I still have to test, but it would be really nice if you didn't need knockout blows, because then I can use those slots for other matchups. It's interesting. I think the wall army is really difficult to, to beat. In general. So, that's something. If you enjoy my content and would like to help me keep making it, consider supporting me over on Patreon, where you're going to access a to a bunch of bonus videos, as well as other rewards depending on the tiers. And thank you so much to all the lovely patrons that are already subscribed. I appreciate it very much. And I will see you all in the next video.